Hey guys, this is Tom Box coming at you with an update on the Xyz Festival event on Master Duel. Now that it has launched officially, we know that it came with an exclusive ban list. As you can see on the right, three of the decks that I've chosen are knocked out because they have been banned. Eldritch is banned, so that kills Zodiac Eldritch and Rank 10 Eldritch. And Gren Maju is kind of banned, but they mainly took away the Eater of Millions and Pot of Extravagance. That really hurts, but because we know what's banned, it completely shifts up what we can actually play. Because those decks hindered some other decks from being able to play. And I can tell you, one of the decks I'm using right now is extremely successful. And it feels like people don't remember how to play Xyz based Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'm gonna give you guys the top 10 deck list that of my choice now, post ban list, and this is gonna be the update. At number 10, we have Rank 10 Trains. Rank 10 Trains is still very aggressive. However, to me, it's a bit one note compared to all the other decks, but that's fine. Being able to punch you for 6,000, burn you for 2,000, getting the OTK is really easy for them. They're built to go second, so they can definitely lose the coin flip and not worry too much about that. And if they do want to play a little bit more on the defensive side, they have Machina Citadel to do board wipes, board clears, and follow up in case you do break their entire boards. So number 10, Rank 10 Trains. Don't take them lightly or you're going to get run over. At number 9, we have Utopia. Still the number toolbox available. You can build boards, you can crack boards, you have some of the best monster-based negation, and you can summon a Hope Harbinger or even Stealth Kragen if you don't want to attach materials onto it. This deck is some of the scariest rank 4 spam. As long as it can spam out rank 4s, you're going to be in for a huge amount of aggression. And if they do build the board first, now you're going to have to break through maybe at least 2 negates from monsters and 1 negate from spell cards. Overall, this is probably one deck that you want to throw in a B-Roll on as soon as you can. Just throwing that out there. At number 8, we have a previous honorable mention, Generators. This is a rank 9 spam deck, but they don't need to actually rank 9 spam. They are a level 9 centric deck that have a ton of boss monsters. Since Generators are meant to generate bosses, well, here they are. And they're super field spell reliant, and they do generate a lot of tokens. So if you crack the field spell, you can break them with evenly match, because tokens and evenly match, they just don't mix very well. This is going to be a pretty easy matchup, but if they do get their stuff going, such as getting Har, getting their Lopter on the field, you're going to be facing off against a huge ton of monsters. And they have Omni Negates, they have basically generic banishing effects, it's not the easiest lineup to play against when they get their setup. But then again, they are a little bit slow and super reliant on fields, but which is why they don't score higher on this list. But don't get me wrong, they still have access to VFD, and you, if you get VFD, you're gonna get stuck. There is another entry on this list that does spam VFD, so that's why that is a little bit higher up there. And number seven, we have a new entry on this list. It's going to be Numeron OTK. Although it's weaker than the meta counterpart with the links included, without the links available, you don't really have a fallback. So this is going to be super aggressive and they're going to try to kill you in one shot This is kind of like the Grand Maju replacement if you will and in this case Of course if you've played against Numerons once you get their Numeron field spell They activate their Numeron calling or use the Numeron network to get the Numeron calling They're gonna summon out four of the numbers one two three and four and they're going to punch you in the face Or they're going to kaiju your monster and then punch that same kaiju over and over and over and over again and then you're gonna die because each time their damage starts to double and once you get to the last one they will be 8,000 damage so this is where it gets really scary now to know how are they going to follow up they can't exactly have the strongest follow-up anymore because they can't go into Avermax they can't go into Appaloosa and they can't even go into uh, Mega Clops so what they're stuck going into is chaos number one which will come back and banish and burn so that's the limitation of where this deck is going but since it's a going second deck they're probably going to focus more on board breaking and choose to go second and crack your board and to be honest it's fair game for them to do something like that too so just be careful about this deck this is an otk deck very aggressive and ignores most board building standard at number six we have a true king dinosaur even though true dracos are completely banned off the face of the earth in this event uh true dragonic diagram is still actually at one and lost world is still available remember giving your opponent that lost world token without the ability to link it off I can say that targeting a monster is going to be uh, probably one of the more difficult things to do once you're stuck with that token. So you're either going to have to crash away that token or find some other way to get rid of it. 
That's going to be uh, one of the scariest things to do. And dinosaurs, UCT is not banned, so you can definitely get some ways of getting that UCT out. However, because you're trying to play with the uh, Animador and Arcosaur and everything along those lines, you need a different typing for the double evolution pill. And the worms that come to mind would be the true kings. You can use Lithosagem to rip apart your opponent's extra deck, get a good look at it too, so you know how to counter them. And Dragonic Diagram is searchable with terraforming. You can terraform into like Lost World, give them that token. It's gonna be really, really annoying. And not to mention that they still have some of the best Xyz monsters, such as Lagia and Dalka. These are like just the solemn monsters. So don't underestimate the True King Dinosaurs. And also uh, the uh, Miscellaneous Source is still at three. Number five, we have Madolce, the sweetest deck on this list. Still very powerful. The deck naturally has one card combo starters. We have Magellene, we have Petting Sessor, we have Angeli, and if the graveyard is loaded, you even have Hoot Kick, and all of them just eventually lead to one another, building a fantastic board. 8,000 damage is never out of reach, and on top of that, they have the best effect in the game, which is Tiara Misu being able to spin two cards, non-targeting, back into the deck. Non-targeting, non-destructive, removal is some of the best things in the game they can actually make two of these and then they can still punch you for 8,000 damage through one card combos that's why medulce is one of the most solid picks for sure however they do have several choke points and uh, if you can stop find those choke points and stop them then they don't get to establish that kind of board now keep in mind the spells and traps are going to be one of the hardest to deal with without sistart it makes it a little bit easier but Still, if you try to run into these monsters without knowing what, how to handle them, those spells and traps are going to generate even more monsters as you try to push, and that's going to lead to an uphill battle, and eventually it's going to snowball back down towards you, and that's just going to suck. So this is actually one of the strongest decks for sure, and even has some of the best hand trap lineups, and also best back row in general. Like Promenade can negate anything on the board. Yeah, just uh, just keep that in mind. It's not the, not the easiest matchup, that's for sure. Number four is going to be Raid Raptor Time Thief. I think Raid Raptors can speak for themselves. They are very fast uh, birds that can do rank four spam. Time Thieves, they have the detaching ability and they have some of the best monsters like Time Thief Redoer, a great Xyz monster that can well, put a card back to your opponent's top of the deck. You can dodge effects by detaching. It's just like a fantastic monster in general. And if you pair that with Perpetua, you got yourself a nice like little defensive loop. But on top of that, we can also go into Ultimate Falcon with the Raid Raptor stuff. Yes, we don't have Y Strix, we don't have Rusty. So the Phantom Knight package is a little bit slower, but Raiders Knight can now shine even harder and potentially even OTK your opponent. So don't underestimate this tech. It's uh, definitely on the fourth spot for a reason because this deck was naturally built for XC summoning and they just lost maybe a little bit of their link support. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're out of the out of the game just yet. They can loop really hard and they will control the field really, really hard. Number three, it's Shark Xyz. I covered it in the previous video. This is still one of the strongest decks in my opinion. Being a one card starter, has some of the best effects in the game, can summon out totally awesome. Pretty early on, dodging Nibiru in general, and while doing that, even if your monsters get destroyed, they always have a solid follow-up. You can go into Utopic Draco Future, you can get more pops, you can waterlock your opponent using Gozen Match because Stealth Kraken turns everything into water. This deck has so many things going for it, and even the recovery, right? Right hand shark if you control no monsters on the field you can summon it from the graveyard and start building stuff you can even go into crooked cook to stall your opponent because that's the mystic mind equivalent of a monster unless you have a kaiju you're not playing against this luckily there is a deck that does play kaiju on top of this list and uh we'll we'll get to that in a sec but like this is one of the most devastating decks available if you're going to be playing it now it's good you can even play this in modern that's how good this deck is so uh shark exceeds ranked rank four water whatever you guys want to call it. One of the most flexible toolboxes and one of the most control-oriented decks available in this Xyz Festival. And at number two, moving up from like the eighth spot, this is going to be pure Lyralesk. I'm playing this deck right now and I've been like on this crazy win streak because my opponent can't deal battle damage. When I played against Numeron OTK, I just detached the material. They tried to attack and then they lost their entire board. I'm like, okay, that's 
That was great. And then I just held on to all my resources. I have Pot of Greeds in terms of Wing Recruital. I can even draw two cards from my uh, draw phase because I have Slower Swallow. There's like so much going for this deck and the OTKs are super easy. You either let your opponent summon a monster and you just run all your recycle stallings into it. That's the, one of the easier ways. Or you can set up a Lyraless Assembled Nightingale and attack them directly like seven times for uh, a total of too much damage to count. Like 1400, just swing into it like six times they die. Like, it's that easy. And, you know, what makes it even easier is that your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect thanks to Assemble Nightingale. And you also don't take battle damage for the entire turn. If you activate your effect, you're safe for the entire turn. You can also make Zeus very easily as well because you have a direct attacker and you're immune to well, battle uh, battle destruction. So there's a lot going for this deck. And yeah, if you've played the Tri Brigade version and you enjoyed the Lyrilus package, you can go even further when you go pure. And this is the deck that I would say is uh, extremely scary. I'm playing it, but it's not even number one. At number one, it's still Zodiac, but it's not Eldritch Zoo anymore. It's Kaiju Zodiac. This is essentially just, I guess, Gren Maju, but instead of playing Grand Maju, you're playing the Zodiac package and you're playing a rank eight spam. What's interesting about this deck is with the tankies and everything, you can boost up the damage of your Numeron Dragon a little bit higher thanks to the Zodiac monster being a rank four. So you're getting additional 4,000 damage on top, which can punch over any Kaiju you throw onto your opponent's side. It doesn't matter because you're hitting them for, I think you're hitting them for like, what, 13,000 damage? That's going to be enough to kill any Kaiju. So this is why Kaiju Zoo is one of the scarier options. It plays exactly like Grand Maju in terms of the rank 8 package, except your normal summon is just going to be going into Dryden. And even if you go into Dryden, you can go into uh, Zeus and you can cycle this. You can even play Pot to cycle your cards back in, play your Zeus again. You should be able to generate at least one Dryden and at least one Zeus with like the direct attack from Borbo. This deck can go second really well. You can even play one of the lesser known hand traps such as Dimension Shifter because you just don't care. Yeah, that's the best part. You don't care that you're banishing most of your cards. So yeah, there's this deck that I don't look forward in facing. And this one has been proven uh, thanks to one of my buddies, Zohair. There's actually a full like TCG deck list of this somewhere on my channel. And I think it was like built like last year or something like that. You guys can go check it out. But uh, this is my top 10 deck picks for the Xyz Festival. If you guys enjoyed this updated one, well smash the thumbs up button. If you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell. Do I have deck lists for every single one of these decks? Well. I don't because I don't have it built. I don't have all these cards, but luckily this event is giving us a ton of gems and I highly recommend you guys just go in and just have fun. And right, and that's all I got for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one.